Mr. Speaker, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I wish Mr. Speaker to contribute briefly to the motion which seeks to exempt the St. Lucia National Trust from the payment of VAT. And Mr. Speaker, I support this motion. I want Mr. Speaker, before I speak, to just ask for a few moments to wish my constituents and the whole of St. Lucia a wonderful Jeune Quayol week. I know that many people are preparing. I know that many communities are preparing. And it is a, a time where we celebrate our heritage. It's a time where we reflect on the past, but also a time where we use the traditions of the past to try to bring back community, bring back togetherness, um, recall the strategies that were used by our grandparents to, to survive harsh economic times, because tradition and celebrations of heritage is not just for the fet, Mr. Speaker. It, it recalls a time where we, we use coup de to survive harsh economic realities. And while we are modernizing, we, are, we have come to realize that some of these traditions are very useful to cure some of the challenges we are having in our societies today. Mr. Speaker, I want to support the motion that the Premier Minister has made to take a by the St. Lucia National Trust. But before I say this, I want to say to all the people of the North and all the people of the South, a bon journée créole et un bon semaine créole. Il est important parce que là nous qu'a parler journée créole, nous qu'a parler des affaires qu'il té, c'est pas un nek nous aimer danser avec nous aimer langage nous avec nous aimer bon manger. Ça est important mais mes speakers ça fait journée créole qu'a fait nous changer qui manière grand grand ayel nous et grand maman nous et grand papa nous vive et qui manière tant et wed et qui m'a dit qu'il vive, qui m'a dit qu'il y a des gens pour mener nous devant et pour donner nous éducation et pour donner nous sagesse là nous à présent. Donc c'est très important. Donc let's have a safe and wonderful journée créole. You will find me, Mr. Speaker, I'm sure you know already, during the weekend, playing my drums, reciting my creole poems, something the opposition believes is a very negative thing. But Mr. Speaker, I stand to support this motion and to say to you, Mr. Speaker, that I am not surprised that the opposition, and especially the leader of the opposition, will be against anything that has to do with support to the National Trust. And no matter how he tries to, to, to capture it, no matter how he tries to craft it, this leader of the opposition, Mr. Speaker, if you listen to him well, from way back when, from when he was in the Senate, way back when, if you listen to what he says, everything he says speaks about his character. It speaks about how he crafts St. Lucianness. Anything that has to do with St. Lucia, coming out of the bowels of our history, coming out of the bowels of our struggles, the leader of the opposition opposes it. And you go back to his history. You look at his policies in government. And even now, Mr. Speaker, anything that has to do with our St. Lucianness, the leader of the opposition opposes it. Remember when he, speak, when he spoke about our, our patrimony and our credit rating? Remember that? Remember when he, he offered Sandy Beach to T.O. Aking? You remember that? You remember when he decided that a large portion of Viewfort should not belong to Viewfortians and St. Lucians, but belong to somebody with an escrow account overseas? Remember that? You remember when he called the jackasses and backing dogs? You remember that? You remember when he said that we have lost our right to speak simply because we were in the opposition 
Do you remember that? You remember when he removed the subvention of the National Trust? And when you think about all of these actions, Mr. Speaker, you get to understand why the leader of the opposition will not support the National Trust. And of course, Mr. Speaker, every organization, toute organisation à cette ici, ça travaille avec gouvernement, avec l'année bagaille pour manger, toute organisation. But why is it the leader of the opposition is always against anything that comes out of the bowels of our traditions, our struggles, and our history? Why is it, Mr. Speaker? And all organizations, all organizations, Mr. Speaker, when you think about the history, the Calypsos, the Calypsonians, it's like you want to say that the leader of the opposition just does not like St. Lucia. Does not like St. Lucians, Mr. Speaker. I can't help but say this. Do you recall when the horsemen and the horse laid people who train and ride horses in Viewfort, and that's been a long tradition, supported by the Member of Parliament for VFO South and many others. Do you recall those races on, on what we call the Kakabef? And do you recall the tradition of horse racing? And when DSH came about, the young men and young people in Viewfort tried to negotiate and say, well, there is a horse race. Can we race our Creole horses there? You remember the rebuke? You think they would allow these young horse men and women who, who have the tradition in horsemanship to race on the track? No. What they did, Mr. Speaker, and it's very symbolic. It was very symbolic. The symbolism in all of this is very important. They ensured that they went there with all of their, their glowing feathered hats and their high top hats in the hot burning sun with three-piece suits to ensure that all of St. Lucia saw what they stood for, Mr. Speaker. That is what this is about. The attack on the National Trust is not different to the attack on all of our local institutions. And they speak about health very passionate about that topic, health. And who is doing better in health, who is not doing better in health. I've said to people before, I have no barometer to compare and measure who do better in health, who ain't do better in health. Because anytime somebody falls sick, we fall sick. Any one of us sitting here can end up at any health institution. Any one of us. And therefore, I have no time to measure what he say or what that one say. Our style in this government has been any professional, whether it be a teacher, a school principal, a lawyer, a doctor, a mechanic, any professional who raise, any professional who raises issues in the manner of conduct of the operations of this government, our style has been to call them in, sit with them, and say, yes, it looks like we have problems over there. How can we solve these problems together? I am not in the business of quarreling or debating with any doctor or any nurse. I am not in that business. Our business is to fix the problems that we found and to ensure that we put the resources in the hospitals, in the health centers, in the procurement processes to improve the conditions of healthcare in this country. But Mr. Speaker, I can't help but say to you the same thing he speaks about when he speaks about national trust. It's the same thing with health care. And it's important when they raise these issues to, to, to point you and to remind you of the history. Because elections have consequences, Mr. Speaker. When the member of parliament for Vieux South was Prime Minister. He and his cabinet colleagues worked very hard to ensure that we built a state-of-the-art hospital. They worked with the French because, as you know, France contributed tremendously or in large measure to the hospital, the Owen King E. Hospital. They worked with Dr. Dabour, the Honorable Dabour, and so many other professions, long-standing traditions of cooperation and professionalism with 
the hospital in Martinique. We lost government in 2016. The transition from Victoria Hospital to the Owen King E Hospital was set. The member of parliament for VFO South as prime minister. Everything was set. Dr. Owen King led this transi tr transition process. Stephen King, sorry. Stephen King. Owen King was his dad. Dr. Stephen King and others. And they did it out of the goodness of their heart and out of, out of the love that they have for St. Lucia. And they said they raised their hands and they said, we are going to make this happen. St. Lucians, with the help of our friends in Martinique and in other places, we have an opportunity to have a world-class facility. We have to change the processes from Victoria Hospital into this new facility. We cannot go in there in the very same way. We have to change the financing. All of these problems were recognized. And for decades and decades and decades, we have been grappling with this issue of health care. How do we, first of all, finance it? And how do we ensure we have better facilities? And how do we ensure we have better procedures? And the process started. We lost the elections in 2016. The facility remained there. 2017, 2018, 2019. The leader of the opposition was prime minister. They left the building there, deteriorating. And they were grappling with issues at the Victoria Hospital. When he speaks about, when he speaks about what doctors are saying that we are going through now, when, we, when he speaks about those things, Mr. Speaker, as I've said before, as I've said before, I will not TMTA. I will not TMTA with anybody about Mr. Speaker. I will not. You will never find me. You will never find me debating or TMTA with the leader of the opposition or anybody else about a comparison between what happened before, what's happening now, what will happen tomorrow at the bedsides of patients, and between interactions of patients with doctors. I, am, I will never go there. Because if he wants to talk about stories, there are many solutions with a lot of stories. <laughs> And these stories are not stories of over the last three years. They are solutions with a lot of stories. And I have a lot of these stories. Some of them recorded. Some of them written. I received letters when I became Minister for Health. Tons of letters about stories. So we can talk about stories. But our resolve is not to go there. Our resolve is to fix the problems that we found. And our resolve is to fix them, whether they are emergencies that arise or whether they are systemic problems that we must fix. The member of parliament for VFO South left a system, left a plan, left professionals in place. The member of parliament for Miku South came in as prime minister. And he destroyed that. He dumped it. Again, for him, there is not enough in the belly of St. Lucians and in the belly of the St. Lucian society to be able to transition a hospital. That is what it, mean, it meant. That for the leader of the opposition, who is Dr. King to come and transition hospital for him? For, for the leader of the opposition, Dr. King and the other doctors are out of the traditions and the bellies of St. Lucia. He could not feel and believe that our people could do it. So what did he do? He disbanded them. There were relationships that were established between St. Lucia and Martinique. 
Et qui a couru derrière ces Français. Ils ont couru derrière ces Français. And the people in Martinique, the professionals, were going to do it free of charge. Free of charge. When I listen to the member of parliament from Miku South talk about health care, you can want to talk about health care. Everything was set. And you know what? They destroyed it. And for approximately $25 million, they brought in a group from Cayman called Cayman, Cayman City and their associates. And his plan, and he said it on television with Rick Wayne, his plan was to privatize the institutions. And he said, do you believe a private entity will come and just do that for, for, for nothing? That was their plan, to privatize the institutions. And they were also going for the St. Jude Hospital for profit. Mr. Speaker, when they talk about health care, privatize it for, for profit. Mr. Speaker, the transition from Victoria Hospital to Owen King EU Hospital was rushed, disorganized, without thought, because the COVID-19 pandemic forced the then government to do what they should have done long time ago. On March 20th, 2020, on March 20th, 2020, they were forced to move the hospital. So how do you expect to move a hospital, to transition a hospital with a forced movement? They were forced because they remained from 2016 up to 2020, and nothing was done to transition the hospital to OKEU. And all of the debt, all of the payables, all of the problems were shifted to the Owen King EU Hospital. COVID-19 taught us a big lesson. The COVID-19 pandemic in St. Lucia, the last set of protocols were really in 2022, between September to December of 2022. So all of this time, when we came into government, we were dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic until 2022, December, when things started to, that was the first year we started to have a, a, a Christmas where people were a little free up. December 2022. So the hospital, like other hospitals in St. Lucia, like the St. Jude Hospital and other health facilities, were grappling with the COVID-19 pandemic, Delta variant in particular. We suffered much. And so, Mr. Speaker, with the rushed movement to the OKEU hospital, no systems could have been put in place. And instead of getting our people who understand our system to work with the transition, they hired for two years for $25 million an organization, a company, which was steadily going to privatization. And then you talk about healthcare and what they're saying about healthcare. Mr. Speaker, as soon as we came in, we were dealing with COVID-19 and also dealing with the challenges of the hospitals. And our resolve, our resolve, Mr. Speaker, was to ensure that we work with the boards of directors of both hospitals to cause there to be order in the processes at the hospitals. So of course there are challenges. Of course there are challenges. Challenges with supplies. Challenges with professionals. Who has decided that, you know, after being on leave, on, on, on paid leave with the hospital for a while, decided, well, you know what, I'm going to move on. Those who have decided not to renew their contract. And those who have decided when they are not renewing their contract, they would write to us and tell us what some of the long-standing issues are. And we have accepted that we are working with all professionals, all medical professionals, all non-medical professionals of the hospitals to ensure that we cause things to do better. So yes, there are problems. And we are not running away from the problems like you run away from the problems. And instead of continuing the St. Jude Hospital project, you, 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 you mash up the buildings. We are not doing that. We are facing the challenges head on. And so, Mr. Speaker, in this, very, in this very atmosphere of consultation, we met 
a number of months ago with both the St. Jude Hospital and the Millennium Hospital administrations. And the Prime Minister met with them, the Cabinet of Ministers met with them, because we felt that these issues were serious long before some of those issues came into the public do domain. We met with them, and we agreed with them on a plan of action. This plan of action includes ex exempting a number of medical pieces of medical equipment from VAT. We have done so before, and we have received from the Medical and Dental Association on the 17th of Oct in October, Mr. Speaker, October 17th, we received a list from the Medical and Dental Association. It is a, a very long list of medical equipment that they want us to exempt from VAT. Pardon me? Medical equipment. But we are not, we are not, no, no, no. They want us to exempt a number of pieces of equipment, very important equipment, from VAT so that it can be used in, in practice in St. Lucia. In private practice. We are going to consider it. The Member of Parliament for Cast for, for Castries is did so a year and a half ago. We did some of MRIs and that kind of thing, and we are going to consider the medical the list of medical equipment, have consultations to see which ones we are going to we are going to return to the parliament with to exempt from VAT. Some of these pieces of equipment include diagnostic equipment, radiology, dental equipment, general surgery, emergency, internal medicine, psychiatry, gynecology, ophthalmology, and so on. We'll continue to update you, Mr. Speaker, so that when we come back to Parliament, we will deal with it. We continue to take concrete actions to ensure that we assist the hospitals with increased human resources, to ensure that we deal with the issue of the emergencies. And over the last few months, we have seen a rapid increase in emergencies at both St. Jude Hospital, emergency admissions at both St. Jude Hospital and the Owen King EO Hospital. A rapid increase. And therefore, this government is doing what it must to ensure that we deal with the healthcare situation. This is in addition to the other programs that we have started. Mr. Speaker, we came in and found a number of our wellness centers, some of them requiring complete rehabilitation. And we have started the rehabilitation of some. We have started the refurbishment of some. We have started providing new equipment to many of them. And the process continues. We understand the frustration of some of the staff in some of the wellness centers, where there is mold and work has to be done in the, in the ceiling. Work has to be done on the floors. We have to repaint, repaint, replace the paints, all of that to ensure that the quality of services we give, we provide service at the highest quality. At this time, we are dealing with the Viewfort Wellness Center, the Babuno Wellness Center, and others. Tremendous work has to happen there to ensure that we do, we change the ceiling and do work on the floors and so on to ensure that we improve the situation there. Mr. Speaker, I want to say to you that we are committed. In addition to providing ambulances to the fire services, we are committed to providing even more resources to the rest of the, of the health sector. The St. Jude Hospital Rehabilitation Project is coming on stream, and there are changes that are being made. There are changes that are, that, that are being caused to take place at both hospitals to ensure that the, the processes in management happen in a much more resilient, much more satisfactory manner. So when he speaks about healthcare, Mr. Speaker, there will come a time when we will put the track record next to our track record and their track record. But the St. Lucia Labour Party government, not only this administration, but the administration under the Member of Parliament for VFO South, started a revolution in health that was stopped by their government. Stopped by their government. And it's as if every time we have to start all over again. This thing about healthcare, Mr. Speaker, when we were in opposition, the things that we criticized 
in terms of the resources to help, and so on. We can show you concrete evidence of where we've made differences, and we will continue to make differences. So, Mr. Speaker, I say to you, we are not intimidated by the name calling. We are not intimidated by what they read. Our resolve is to ensure that we fix the problems that we found and we make things better. Mr. Speaker, I wish to say to you that a very small but significant example will be demonstrated on Thursday. On Thursday morning, we will go to Deriso. We'll go to Deriso, and we are going to unveil a refurbished Lilia Haraxing Wellness Center. There is so. I should show you the conditions of the cupboards before it was rehabilitated by this government. I will show you the pictures, Mr. Speaker. Which constituency is The constituency of Miku South. And he was Prime Minister for over five years. And we are going to rename this health center in the honor, to honor a long-standing stalwart of the community of Deriso and Miku South. A nurse who gave her whole life to nursing. And that is just a start, Mr. Speaker, to demonstrate our resolve. Very soon, the Member of Parliament for Denry North will give us the go-ahead for his wellness center, which is, which is complete. We are just... And again, the Member of Parliament for Viewfort South in 2016 allocated funds to refurbish the wellness center. The leader of the opposition came and they stopped it. He talked about health care. Yeah. He spent five and a half years in government. And the people of Denry North did not get the wellness center. Well, anybody who goes to Denry North now at Larishus, ah. you will see. The members say, don't go yet. No Wait for the opening. <laughs> you will see what we have done with the Larishus Wellness Center. You can bring preview when you come in. New equipment, new facility for the people of Denry North. And there are other areas in the country that will receive similar treatment. The Grosile Polyclinic. We are moving towards 24-hour services to help the situation at OKEU. And in the coming months or early next year, you will hear more about it. New equipment coming for centers like the Viewfort Wellness Center for Maternal and Child Care. You will hear more about that in the next few months. So today is not the day, Mr. Speaker, to speak about the millions of dollars we have spent for new equipment at our hospitals, at our wellness centers, new training, new services in maternal and child care, new services for, for cancer screening in cervical cancer. The levy, the health and security levy, the leader of the opposition speaks so much about which only collects possibly a maximum of $35 million, is assisting health. Levy a ki nuka pay on the health and security. Nuka premier minister ka servi pou bay sector sote a si po. E ki pa me ma se, to run the Owen King EU hospital alone is close to $100 million a year. The St. Jude Hospital, currently, you need about $45 million a year. Their subvention is nothing close to that. So you can, and when we go to the new St. Jude Hospital, the cost will increase. So that is why the government is working very hard, both with the World Bank, with local professionals, and with consultants, to ensure that we have a health financing strategy and policy, so that we can finance healthcare in a sustainable way. That is part of the work and part of the mix. So when they are talking about healthcare, and what the doctors say, and what the dentists say, and who say it was this way, that way. It's never been that way. I don't deal with those debates at all. 
The doctors who have complained, we have met with them face to face. We have met with them around the table. The prime minister has met with them. The cabinet of ministers met with them. And they told us what the issues are, whether they are immediate issues or long-standing issues. And we have taken steps. All of the steps have not been, all of the issues have not been resolved. We have taken steps to resolve the issues. Just a few days ago, Mr. Speaker, the Millennium Heights Medical Com Complex, Owen King E Hospital, cleared containers of supplies to ensure that we deal with the situation. Just a few days ago, the St. Jude Hospital, we are working with the St. Jude Hospital, first of, us, of all, to augment the staff, and very soon to look at their own payables. They have payables of possibly about $9 million, long, long, long standing payables. And Prime Minister has said, let us look at that. Even though we can't do everything now, let us help St. Jude Hospital to deal with some of these payables. And very soon, like we did with Owen King E Hospital, we are going to help St. Jude Hospital to deal with some immediate payables. So we are taking actions. We have increased the subvention to the St. Jude Hospital, increased the subvention to the Owen King E Hospital, Millennium Heights Medical Complex, to over 60 something million dollars. So we are taking action. So please, Makadu, Mr. Speaker, tout ces problèmes là yoka di ansante ya. La ni problème toujours. La ni problème pour vous. Mais nous pas ka faire ko leader opposition et koui et akredi metin en bas les têtes nous akredi la pas ni problème. Santé ni problème depuis depuis temps ancien ancien ancien. La ni problème pour joindre Wimed. La ni problème pour joindre docteur parce que docteur ka aller travailler l'autre pays. La ni problème avec pour jouer nos parce que c'est nos là qui allait travailler l'autre pays. Là, il y a problème avec building. Là, il y a problème avec health center qui a croisé. Pour combien de temps Health center, deux huit soirs. Qui est le premier ministre qui a représenté Il était le premier ministre avant. Il était le premier ministre pour en haut, six années. Et sous l'état health center, ça c'est un homme qui mêle avec moun. Ça c'est un homme qui a droit à votre santé. Nous venons, nous mangeons health center avec Jedi. Nous avons une cérémonie à 11 h pour Bay Health Center en nos neuf. Et nous avons créé le Lilia Haraxing Deriso Wellness Center. Ce n'est pas un homme qui met l'air de santé. Si vous ne mettez pas l'air de Health Center, on ne peut pas vous faire. Parce que là, vous avez représenté, vous avez parlé de santé aujourd'hui. Mais oui, nous n'avons pas de problème. Là, nous n'avons pas de problème. Avec le gouvernement, ça, là, il y a travail, avec nos avec 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 docteur pour nous tuer qui nous a résolu ces problèmes là ça c'est différence gouvernement nous avec gouvernement yotenien c'est pour ça c'est pour ça moi qu'a dit monsieur qui a dit d'opposition monsieur pas contre cette lycée monsieur pas contre cette lycée docteur king qui était là pour tirer victoria mettre l'autre côté à owen king e hospital yo qui était là l'hôpital là pour six ans n'ont pas fait rien moi-même, ni l'idée, c'est parce que Dr. King, c'est un septicien. Il allait jusqu'à l'autre côté, mener Cayman City, pour privatiser l'hôpital là. Mais c'est pas contre cette lycée. Et tout le bagage, il a fâché en l'air. Depuis vous levez non cette lycée, il s'est fâché. Ou levez non National Trust, il s'est fâché. Ou levez non Sandy Beach, il s'est fâché. Jazz Festival, il s'est fâché. J'ai que je ne crois pas, il s'est pas content. Mais quand même, je suis mis à quoi dire. Ou depuis jour vous faites cette liste, on passe à parler créole. Où est mes jeunes créoles? Hein? Eric. Moi, je suis Monsieur Taiwan. À Taiwan, c'est Eric. Mais c'est qu'à parler créole, pas ce système. Avec leader opposition, on passe à parler. Il ne pas connaître. Yon des mots, tout ça, il connaît. Yon des mots. Pain en pangé avec l'autre bagaille. Il connaît yon des mots. So, Mr. Speaker, what, what, what I say to you, What I say to you as I close is this. There are issues which must be resolved, whether it be the National Trust or any national organization. The issue of exemption of VAT is a serious one, and that any organization which gets exemption of VAT is something the government needs to take seriously. We want to assist these organizations, and I agree that there, can, there will be consultation between consistent consultation between the government and the St. Lucia National Trust. I support the VAT exemption for the National Trust because I believe the National Trust has an important role to play. I put it to you, Mr. Speaker, 
lastly, that my view of, of the former prime minister and leader of the opposition is that almost everything he does is against the best interests of St. Lucia and St. Lucians. And he's going to do everything with Martinez and with all of them to destroy St. Lucia. And we are not going to allow that to happen. The people of St. Lucia have seen the benefits that have accrued to them as a result of the policies of this government. And we are going to continue. We are going to continue to fix health care. We are going to continue to fix, fix infrastructure. And we are going to continue with our Prime Minister to ensure that we take St. Lucia to higher, higher heights. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs>